What's up guys? Kevin here, uh, back with another video. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to do actually a discussion video uh, slash, I guess, thoughts video, if that makes sense. Uh, like today I am going to be talking about the recently released Fear of God Athletics line. Um, as well as the controversy behind it, as well as the disagreements and the reception, etc. Um, just because I think it's a very interesting topic as well as it gives us an idea on how this collaboration was received as well as the whole process of it because a lot of people don't know um, all of the background behind it as well as some people who are just very, very into it, they should look at it a little bit more critically as well. I also am going to make some coffee just because that is, I guess my go-to thing is to talk about clothing and shoes uh, while drinking coffee. So all right, so 45 grams. Okay. So Let's talk about actually how we even got here, basically. So Fear of God's official involvement with Adidas uh, started in December of 2020. Uh, during that time, uh, they were in talks for a while. Jerry was in talks with multiple different brands, including, but not limited to, Reebok, as well as some brands that are overseas, etc. Um, and then they finally, had a conversation in association with Yeezy as Jerry Lorenzo was a critical part of Yeezy season one, especially for the Yeezy 750, as you can definitely see in some of his uh, models after that came out. So around that time, um, Fear of God and Nike actually had a relatively successful collaborative line together um, as Jerry points out that the idea of Fear of God Athletics actually came while he was at Nike and he felt like he was quote unquote putting numbers on the board and was making steps towards getting that official Fear of God Athletics line established. So unfortunately for him, Nike had some other plans. When the plan was in motion to have Fear of God Athletics uh, be an official part of that Nike Fear of God collaboration, Nike unfortunately canceled on that and cut their partnership a bit prematurely. Now, there was no official reason given, but sort of reading in between the lines, I think it partially has to do with Nike trying to slim down the number of hero collaborations that they have, as well as make room for some lesser known companies and lesser known brands to have a bigger center stage. So those hero collaborations include uh, like Matthew Williams, uh, like Virgil Abloh, of course, and the smaller collaborations might be like an Ama Manye or a Union, where those uh, brands definitely need that funding as well as that space, while Nike can't afford to just constantly be firing at all, all pistons going, going, going. I think they have to make a hard decision and a hard look at which collaborators and which product lines they really want to push. And I think that was a strategic decision not to include Jerry Lorenzo in their, I guess, future. So again, unfortunate, he had a pretty successful line with Nike, including the Air Fear of God 1, the shoot arounds, the Air Raid that he made, the Air Moccasins, as well as the Skylon. So going back to that initial announcement at 2020, it was also revealed that he had not started on any of the production or the ideation of it upon that or prior to that announcement. So um, in terms of those who know about development, you kind of know that that kind of signifies that at least it's a year away, two years away probably, because it takes about six to eight months for something to go from production all the way to retail while development can take however many years as it could. But in the public's eye, that essentially kind of sets at center stage. And especially in Adidas's point of view, it kind of makes Fear of God a key collaborative player in their entire sort of ecosystem. 
The initial announcement was different from where the partnership eventually led to be. Uh, initially, Jerry Lorenzo was supposed to be heading Adidas basketball as well as having that Fear of God Athletics line. Um, the further the process went, there were some uh, complications as well as some uh, like disagreements from both the brand as well as Fear of God. And he quotes in his complex interview, the longer I got into it, I realized, hey, if we just put all of our focus on athletics, that's going to help everything instead of me trying to do too much. Again, there was a lot of this sort of dancing around the topic, but I personally think if you if you really think about it, the way that Fear of God operates is completely contradictory to how a big multi-billion dollar company would be run. Um, so especially for the basketball division, they have quarterly releases, they have monthly releases, and I also think that they were banging too much on Jerry's capacity to really handle all of that because it would have eventually led to a place to where he's going to half-ass basketball and half-ass athletics. So I do think that streamlining that decision was the right choice, but at the same time, I think he was very, very ambitious from the start, but then he needed to taper that down because that took about one to two years for them to understand that Jerry can't do both basketball as well as athletics. So I think that also leaves a lot of open space and a lot of development time kind of gone to waste. And with basketball in specific and something that is so sports focused, you can't just base it off of how someone is feeling or when they feel like the design is ready. As a lot of these technical fields, they require technology and modern technology to advance with it. So with Adidas basketball sake, they can't wait an additional year or two years as technology, especially in cushioning and basketball and how materials are designed, how they're shaped, the angle, the proportion, um, all of that can change within months really. Uh, so it would, it would be quite a disadvantage for Adidas athletes to have their shoe take even longer than a year to even develop and then they have to take an additional year for them to produce. So I think that was where the point of view where they both had to disagree. So after that separation between Fear of God Athletics and Adidas Basketball, Jerry really did step more into a focused role at Athletics. He also mentions in his GQ article that he met David Beckham and that really was one of the driving key forces to really hone in his focus and kind of see a clear vision for athletics. You can clearly see in some of the release products as well as especially the footwear that it was very inspired by 90s football slash soccer uh, inspiration as well as Adidas. Uh, boxing DNA, especially with the boxing shorts and the Muhammad Ali sort of vibe. So now talking about how we got here, now let's talk about where we currently are at. The collection has officially dropped on Fear of God's website, as well as it's slated to release at tier zero, so the higher tier Adidas stores, as well as a few Adidas brand locations. There are four footwear models that were released. The 86 Low, which is priced at $200, the Adidas Basketball One, which is priced at $250, the Adilet Slide, which is priced at $110, as well as the Los Angeles Runner at $170. First, talking about the 86 Low. This is Fear of God's take on the Rivalry Low. It is an elevated take, as well as slightly tweaked to give it a bit of a sloped look. Jerry specifically cited the Air Force One as a direct inspiration, as well as a competitor to the 86 Low. He says, I've always wanted to wear Air Force Ones, but the toe box is too big for me. He specifically states that he can't wear Air Force Ones without the toe looking very bulbous and calling them bozo clown shoes. Next is the Adidas Basketball One, which is priced at 250 again. This is Athletic's first entry into the performance footwear space, but even then Jerry admits that the footwear leans more towards lifestyle than he would have liked in his Athletic line. He says, the next shoe that comes out is 100% performance. Next up is the Adilet Slide. This is essentially a rebranded version of a European exclusive Adilet. The style code of that one is BD7592. 
Jerry himself says that he didn't really change much and he essentially says he can't perfect something that's already perfect. And this is also just a side comment for me. Uh, this Adilet slide has hit sales multiple times for $50, sometimes even lower. So if you guys are in Europe, please, a lot of the European made Adilet slides are exactly like this with the micro suede. Um, I personally got mine in hand, wasn't liking it, and then I returned it. Last but not least is the Los Angeles Runner. This is Fear of God's elevated take on the classic Adidas Los Angeles, which is a mid-tier running shoe that Adidas retroed a few years back. It wasn't a very popular model at the time. It still is a bit of a niche take. Jerry has not spoken much about this runner, but one can assume that this is supposed to be a bit more of an accessible footwear model, similar to how the Skylons were with Nike. After the mixed reviews from consumers about the price point as well as the collection as a whole, Jerry has responded on Instagram with multiple comments regarding the collection. He states that it took way too many rounds to land on this and Fear of God and Adidas had to pay additional cost of learning on how to work together. He also says that the shoes, they're not making any profit off of them, as well as they probably should cost like $100, but they're not. Next up is my opinion really about where we are currently at. I really believe that it's, it's a really difficult situation for every party involved, regardless of whether it's the brand Adidas or fear of God, or even the consumer. I think nobody is a clear cut winner in the situation and that's not really how you wanna start off a collaborative project. Number one, the consumer. The consumer, we, find ourselves in a position where we're getting a product that we are anticipating three years in the making but was actually really finalized in one year, if two years. The consumers are really expecting a wealth of work as well as product design to come from a three year incubation period, but we feel a bit cheated as it feels incomplete of the total vision. For a price point that is inflated due to the quote unquote additional cost of learning on how to work together, I think that admission of that additional cost sort of faults the consumer for that learning and growing pains. When the consumer really had no say and no real uh, involvement in the creation of this product. So uh, it almost feels like the consumer is being penalized for both of them not really knowing how to work together. Last but not least, the scope of the project is quite different from when we initially anticipated it. As a consumer, we're very excited to see Fear of God position Adidas as a leader at sportswear as well as luxury street. But this feels very middle of the road for most consumers. The value proposition was not clearly communicated, nor did the products really feel like they were definitively better than essentials. On the other hand, they definitively feel like they're not as high quality as mainline. This causes a comparison downwards where people are comparing athletics to essentials rather than comparing upwards to mainline. For fear of God, they also find themselves in a difficult position as well. Their desire to take on more responsibility at Adidas causes confusion and delay, as well as the public is quite mixed about where they're currently coming from. This now manifests with a mixed matched expectation from the public and how they're gonna perceive the project. Next, the disagreements from the brand as well as the production hell that the collection went to causes the price of the development to skyrocket, thus them needing to pass it on to the consumer. Last but not least, their initial release is not really their best foot forward as Jerry continually mentions that the next product is going to be better than the last. He quote unquote, the next shoe that comes out will be 100% performance as well as he also says the shoe that comes after this is uncompromised and that he's really excited about it. That already frames this collection as something where he had to compromise as well as it's something that he isn't originally anticipating. So that already positions this initial release as not necessarily their best, but it's something that they had to put out. Last but not least, Adidas. Uh, Adidas is also put in a very, very difficult position, especially these past few years. So for Adidas, their prime collaborator, Ye, has been officially separated and disconnected from the brand. This leaves a huge product gap in their line. They have nobody who can even match the level of involvement as well as the level of success 
that Ye had at Adidas currently. Also, second, to talk about their collaborator, their collaborator had initially taken on the responsibility and the mantle of creating both a collaborative sub line akin to Y3 or Stella McCartney design, as well as Adidas basketball. But around two years into their collaboration, they decide to just completely wipe it clean. So that already kind of creates this sort of weird mismatched anticipation and expectation of each other. Last but not least, the collaboration and the anticipation has been built up to a Herculean figure. So they need to match and recoup those costs of investment that they already spent three years on developing. Adidas has also put in a lot of talent into Adidas athletics. One notable name being Nathan Van Hook, who was the designer of a lot of HTM stuff at Nike. He was a senior creative director at Nike as well especially during the time of the Air Yeezy 2. Uh, they recently, in the past few years, have brought him on to Adidas and he's working very closely with Jerry. Where do we go from here? Um, although the collaboration has been full of production issues, development delays, mismatch expectations, and price point inflation, the collection seems to be on the right track as Jerry, through all the interviews and controversy, etc., seems to be very excited about the next steps that athletics is going to take. One thing for sure is that we have seen a glimpse into what Jerry thinks Adidas can be with his athletics line. And I'm just hoping that in the next release, he'll be able to communicate that value proposition as well as bring out the performance footwear that he really, really is striving towards. Another thing that I do want to comment, uh, in terms of the release, I know a lot of people are saying that the collaboration is dead or that these are bricks, etc. So I really do think that the reason why this product is not necessarily selling out is primarily because of the fact that they had a lot of units produced. Adidas was anticipating three years worth of pent up demand uh, to be collected up for this release. So I think they had an adequate amount of stock uh, as well as the position that they're really trying to frame uh, Fear of God Athletics is essentially to be like Y3 and a lot of Stella McCartney stuff. Uh, so both of those lines are generally accessible but at a slightly elevated price point. Uh, where they are available at multiple retailers, multiple stockists. So if you look at like a bunch of different Adidas stockists, they have Y3, they have Stella McCartney things on sale as well as available year round for retail. So you guys have to keep that in mind that they probably produced enough to saturate demand. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. What do you guys think about the Adidas Fear of God uh, athletics collaboration? Um, I would love to get a dialogue going in terms of what you guys think about the whole collection. What do you guys think about uh, the future of Fear of God Athletics? And do you guys like the first collection? Do you guys not? I would love to get a dialogue going down in the description down below. Also, if you guys like this sort of content, I do a lot of fashion footwear content. So please subscribe, like, comment, etc. And yeah, I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.